Sam Hewen. Hello, mate. Hello. How are you? Good. Yes, in the sweat box. Yeah, I know it gets incredibly hot in here. We will start to become one with these chairs eventually. Good. But um, this is probably, at this stage, my second favourite place I've interviewed you in person. Ah, where was the first? I'm going to let you guess. I mean, we've done, what, three interviews in person? Yeah. 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 I mean, do you want me to tell you? you I I think probably the favourite one was outside the Eiffel Tower, was it? Yeah, in one. That was incredible. I mean, I think they call it magic hour, you know, when the light is just perfect. golden, yeah. Sunsets, sunlight on the Seine. The the Eiffel Tower, just the lights glittering as they they lit up. I think we almost had a couple of glasses of champagne Mm. um, while we uh, gorilla filmed some, some... um, illegal filming around the Eiffel Tower <laughs> and then prepared to run away from the gendarmes. So. I know. You sort of watch movies and you think, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all it's all done legit, fully permitted up. And then the truth is, it's like, just turn the camera on. Turn the camera on and make sure no one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like you're not doing anything. Yeah. Because that was, that was the unofficial rap party, sort of unofficial rap party to SAS Red Notice. That's right. It turned into a rap party. It did. It was the, we'd shot in Budapest, uh, where you had come also to, to interview us in the, so the cold. freezing cold. Oh, that was my fault though, because you were dressed properly for that weather. And I was like, ooh, I'll put on my stylish coat. Yeah. Bad idea. That was the coldest I've ever been. You look stylish though. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, and then we uh, obviously in Paris to finish the sort of that section uh, of SES. And then I think we actually filmed. I think we filmed in London or was it after? I can't remember. We did pickups. Uh, we went to Spain as well. So uh, you've been on quite the journey with no, us on that movie. I really felt like I, I was on a journey. And that night was great. A lot of wine was quaffed. Mm. I did get a bit of anxiety when we were in that Chinese restaurant. You know, when you get that thing, I was like, are we that table? Are yeah. we Are we? <laughs> are we the Brits abroad? I think we were. Not us, particularly. The other people at the table. Yeah, yeah, we were quite civilised, but I think yeah, there's a large group of us uh, that consisted of, you know, uh, drunk actors, um, you know, financiers, mm. producers, uh, a psychopath, <laughs> uh, and, and, and yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. it was fun. It's always the investors. Always the investors who start you off. The worst. Right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's blame them. Yeah. Let's, let's blame the people who made your movie happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to go around business, right? So how is it then? You've just finished Outlander yeah. season six. Yeah. In London. Uh, mm. Decompression. Do you have to decompress? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I was just saying to you outside there, we were just chatting and it, um, it really is a sort of transitional moment and it, it, it's sort of sometimes you hard, it, it takes me very hard to sort of switch off and, and for the first few days after shooting and completing a season of Outlander, you know, you're sort of still on this almost hamster wheel of getting things done and doing things. So I came to London, I have a bunch of meetings and, uh, and various things going on, but it, suddenly it's just dawned on me, you know, I'm like, I'm done. And it is, to be fair, the shorter season we've done, it's only eight eps, mm. but it was potentially one of the hardest, you know, because we were shooting during a pandemic and there were just a lot of factors involved that made it, you know, pretty difficult to shoot. So, uh, so I'm, yeah, I've been celebrating, I've been enjoying being amongst people again mm-hmm. and, you know, things opening up as well. You know, in Scotland, we've been in a, a kind of a lockdown, a lot more strict than you guys have in, in England. So um, it's nice to actually see people. So you've been what, about four months filming up there? Started Was it February? We started January the January. 3rd. Oh, wow. Yeah. How isolated are you up there? Because obviously I know you've got a studio just outside Glasgow that you do mm-hmm. a lot of stuff in, but then like when you're filming actually out in rural Scotland, yeah. like, are you are you away from everything? Do you stay in a trailer? Are you camping? I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're basically, they, they're, yeah, they've, they've upgraded us now to, to like, you know, not the pop-up tent, but now I've got it. Uh, <laughs> glamping. Yes, glamping. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Um, I've often thought that as well, you know, when you get like your, your caravan, your trailers, you know, your unit base, which is, you know, obviously all your trailers there and everyone has their own one. I'm like, why do we bother going to stay in a hotel? <laughs> Just stay in your trailer mm. and you would have to get, wouldn't have to get up as early. But um, no, we are, we, we, we primarily at our studios, which are fantastic, uh, that have grown from, you know, a dusty old warehouse that had sort of you could call it a sound stage to now we have, you know, five full sound stages. We have a whole back lot, which is a whole uh, town, frontier town, pretty much. 
you know, set in the uh, late 1700s in, in America. Um, and then we shoot all around Scotland. We were just shooting up in Glencoe the last three days. And it really was just st- still snow up there on the mountains. <laughs> there's, of course, midges. There's everything else. Oh. But it but it, it was stunning. And it very it felt very much, you know, that is Outlander. I mean, I love that part of the world. I spent most summer holidays for about a decade on, on the west coast of Scotland. So like Arran, mm. Sky, mm. Oban, Malaig, Arisaig, yeah. all of that. And actually not far from Glencoe, about an hour away, Loch Awe. Like, Loch Awe is stunning. Mm. It's, uh, I, I'm glad you said that because I love the west coast of Scotland. And, you know, people do go up, especially tourists, and they'll drive around the, the north coast 500 or they go to Edinburgh or whatever. But but the islands are the mm. most magical part. And I think, you know, p- part of our TV show that I created, Men in Kilts, was about that, about trying to introduce people to that side. Mm. It's very magical. So now you've finished out under scene six, are you happy? Because obviously you're a producer on it now, so I guess mm. you've got more concerns, more pressure right. on your shoulders. Yeah. But are, are you walking away happy with what you've done in the with this season? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's been challenging. I think um, just you know shooting through a Scottish winter. I think during a pandemic, it was weird. You know, we'd go to work, especially at the start, and it was you know we didn't know what was going to happen. I just finished a movie in London, which had similar protocols, you know, the, the COVID protocols, but to be in Scotland and to see no one on the roads driving to work and just to be in this world where, you know, it felt like we were the only people at work. Mm. It was kind of crazy. So, um, yeah, but I'm really pleased with this, this season and it does, as I said, it feels, it feels like almost like early, uh, early Western vibe to it. Wow. Um, and you know, we're building up to the war of independence and the, there's, it's obviously there's time travel as well. And there's all these other elements. So yeah, it feels it feels like a small but mighty uh, season. So you've been doing it. What? How long have you been playing Jamie Fraser? And now seven seven years is it I going think, on? Seven I think years, it's almost eight. Yeah. Wow. And um, yeah, it's it's mad how fast it goes and. Uh, it's been a, quite a journey and I, I'm, I'm feel very fortunate, you know, it's changed my life definitely and given me a lot of opportunities. Um, but it's mad, you know, you look back, I've, I've even being in this near the studio, you know, I used to live near here mm-hmm. and sort of looking back when I was, you know, a, a jobbing actor or trying to get into the industry and thinking what it'd be like to, to be in a TV show of my own. <laughs> How was it though, that first audition? Like when, do you remember it? Like, like it was yesterday when, did you have to audition? For Outlander? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I'd, I, so I'd been in America, I'd done this, um, arena tour called Batman live where I played Batman and Bruce Wayne. And it was ridiculously <laughs> amazing. And this is one of those jobs you never think you'll ever do. And then I'd spent like, I think almost four or five months staying in Los Angeles for pilot season. And, uh, I got pretty close on a, a number of jobs, but not got them and came back to London. I was feeling pretty despondent and, and, you know, spent all my money. And it was just at this point, I was 30, 34. Uh, and just thinking, can I keep doing this? And then I had this audition uh, and I remember when I read it, I just was like, oh yeah, I, I know this guy. Like I can do this. Mm. It was strange. I think it really was all about timing. Um, because also then when I went to do my audition, one of my best friend's wives was the auditioner. She was there. So it just suddenly put me at ease. Wow. And then she brought my best friend in or one of my best friends in to test with me on the screen test. So it was just like <laughs> all these sort of... Uh, wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, the perfect storm of uh, feeling comfortable. In- yeah. Because those things must be terrifying. Oh, they're terrifying. Yeah. And I think they've changed a lot. But, you know, I, I've had experiences where, you know, there's... It used to in the old days, you go in and you, especially in America, you test for the, the studio, the network, and there'd be like the lawyers are there. They're, they're, <laughs> their, their mom, their dog, you know, like it was just like a whole, like a group of 20 people just sitting watching you do a scene. Uh-huh. And it really was such an odd experience. Mm. But I think it's changed a little bit now. America's weird. I once did a, a, an audition for E! Channel in America as, nice. a, as, a, as a host. And um, I, I, just because I'd done it in the UK, I just I rewrote the script they gave me, mm. and I did it. And the look on their faces, they were like, "What are you doing? <laughs> what? Just read what we've written." It Wrong. was it was like heresy. That wow! I, <laughs> changed their words, so wow. didn't get the job. Didn't get that job. No, yeah. you've upset the whole writers' <laughs> union now as well. And. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found a lovely quote from uh, Diana Gabaldon uh, when you were first cast. Uh, I'm not going to do an impression. Oh, uh, go on. Of her. <laughs> do you know? Okay. She speaks. She's got this. She's got this beautiful sing-song voice, yeah. and she speaks crazy fast, doesn't she? As well. Yeah. yeah, she does. She has quite a unique voice. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. All right, go on. That man is a Scott to the bone and Jamie Fraser to the heart. 
That's really good. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I can see what you're doing. You're no. trying to make me feel better uh, about that moment in I my mean, life. She's from, you know, <laughs> Germany. Yeah, it's good. No, no, that's great. But oh. what a lovely, what a lovely thing to hear, because obviously um, I had no idea, I genuinely no idea just how, I mean, I knew the books were popular, yeah. but they're one of the best selling book series in the world. Yeah. Like they've sold more than Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. They've sold more than His Dark Materials, more than Bridget Jones. It's huge, yeah, huh? It's huge. I, I believe she's also, I remember there was a quote, she also said that I was grotesque. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. When I she, didn't find that, I didn't read that didn't, one. Can you, you imagine? Look, yeah. <laughs> that man is grotesque. Well, in uh, what context? Um, so, it, it, you know, she, she's very clever. She has a way with words as well. But I think she'd seen the headshot that I'd taken and it was like, this man is not Jamie Fraser. He's grotesque from this picture. But then right. when she saw yeah, the audition, she thought I was him. So, yes. How quickly did you get a new headshot after that? that Straight away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the phone to oh, that no. photographer. Oh, can we do you, another one? You know when I said make me look good? It was, the word was glamorous, not grotesque. Gr yes, yes. Lost in translation. <laughs> but um, no, she's been great and she's been such a support and a friend. And throughout the years, you know, always touch base with her. And she's written episodes as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, a remarkable and it has this great fan base. And I think... I was totally unaware of it when I first got the job. I, if I'd known about the fan base, I mm -hmm. think I probably would have thought twice because it just would have been so overwhelming, I think. I, I can imagine. I once interviewed um, Robert Pattinson at the first Twilight premiere. Oh, wow. he, he did. And the scream was like, nothing else I'd ever heard. And he, the first thing he said to me, uh, when I was like, what do you make of that? He was like, it's not for me. It's for the character. That first word out of his mouth. Yeah. The immediate sort of distancing between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's true. I think... Uh, I think, you know, playing a, an iconic character, and I think Jamie Fraser is definitely one, you know, it's like, y y people are, they're ob obsessed with these characters because they're so invested in them and they want them to be real and they want them to, to they want to get as close to them as possible. So I think sometimes it is hard for people to separate the actor from the character. Mm. Um, and I think he's done a, a, he did a great job of sort of going in a different mm. direction, didn't he? After his yeah. I mean, I, I guess the, the the positive of that, not that it's a negative where they can't separate, although sometimes you hear about soap stars in particular just getting abused on the street because they're yeah. playing a villain in the, this series arc and people are like, you find you ruined it. How dare you? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the other side is just how loyal the fans of so Outlander are. So loyal. We, we're so thankful for them. They've followed us through this journey and, um, they also not only support the Outlander, but any project that we do, any charity work that we do, mm. uh, myself, my co-stars, they support wholeheartedly. And and honestly, we can't thank them enough. And it's a shame, you know, right now with the pandemic, I think not being able to sort of do these fan events because they're always really nice, especially comic cons, you know, where you get to sort of get to see people's excitement about about the thing that you've been working on for so long because you sometimes forget when you're mm. you know day in day out on set you kind of forget that people are anticipating seeing the next one mm. i mean like you said you've been away for a while before um outlander and obviously you're a scot you're a proud scot mm. is there any other kind uh no uh, <laughs> no i think we are quite proud i think but i think it's i think scots have become like more proud recently mm. i think in the past you know, remember that train spotting quote, you know, shit being Scottish, the lowest of the low. <laughs> and now, you know, it's like we have some pride. We've always got pride in ourselves, but I think there's this pride in Scotland. I think it is. It's, it feels quite uh, progressive at the moment. Mm. And uh, we're doing things slightly differently out there. Yeah. How did your relationship change with it then once you got Outlander? Because like I said, you've been away for a while. Did your relationship with Scotland changed once you were back there, like, mm. and have been for like nearly the past decade. Yeah. Yeah. It totally has. You know, so I came to London and, um, I'd been here 12 years and I guess worked on and off in Scotland, but I think sort of almost doing Outland has become, you know, become a, almost an ambassador for Scotland. Right. Mm. And I think I did, I fell in love with my country again and I fell in love with the outdoors and hiking and climbing. And that's kind of how my charity fundraiser might be challenged started. And then also, for instance, even Men in Kilts, the, the show that I created and, and the book I did as well, Clanlands, it's, it's all about sort of sharing that, that love of Scotland. And I, and I am, I'm, I'm a proud Scot. So 